Okay. Hey, welcome everybody. Rob here for our BSPU call. Excited to be with you. Today, I want to go over some of what I like to call the fundamentals, the foundation of our million dollar author program and the model that I use to convey that program. So I'm going to do two things with you today. One is I'm going to go through the model itself quickly. I want to look at where some of the pitfalls are that you may be in, whether you're in the writing phase, the marketing and promotion phase of your book, or the uh, what we call the profit phase, which is a never-ending phase, by the way, uh, of your book once your book is launched and made into a bestseller. And so I want to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about that. Then I want to talk about why I use the model that I use and um, maybe give you some ideas uh, to create something like this for your own business because of the importance um, of conveying the information. Okay, so let me, we're going to go to the whiteboard and let me just make sure I got the whiteboard pulled up. I do not. So let me do that. Then I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to, I'm going to draw on it because I like to do that. So bear with me a second while my whiteboard gets pulled up. And uh, you guys have probably seen this model. Um, if you have my, if you have my book, if you have published pro profit, this model is in the book. Um, if you do not, then you should have a copy of it. You certainly do in the membership area because you're all my clients. So you have a digital version of the book for sure in the membership area. Um, but you should get a physical version as well. And I'm happy to uh, give you a link if you want uh, you know, to do the free plus shipping, uh, which is cheaper than Amazon. But you can get on Amazon as well. Okay, all right. So let's dive in. I'm not trying to sell my book here. I'm just sharing with you about the model. All right, I'm going to move my camera over here if it's okay with you guys. And I'm going to roll down my whiteboard and I want to talk a little bit about what we call our million dollar author model. So I'll call that uh, MDA model. And this is the whole idea of going from author 1.0 to author 2.0, okay? So I have broken my model down into these three elements. I call them publish, promote, you guys should know this, and profit, okay? Uh, this is the million dollar author model or formula. And the idea is if you are in this phase right here, um, publish, that is the point at which you're doing anything having to do with the writing of your book. You're writing it, you're getting your book edited, you're getting your book designed, you're working on the proofreading, the images, the, the formatting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that, that is the publish uh, part. I understand that there's writing and publishing involved. The promotion part itself, has to do with just the promotion of the book, okay? Just the promotion of the book. It is not about the promotion of you as the author of the book. It's not about the promotion of your business uh, or your offer. It's just about promoting the book. And then profit is everything having to do with how you're making money, making what I like to say an impact and an income with your book on an ongoing basis. OK, so author 1.0, the idea is that, number one, it's really hard to write a book, to be successful with the number of copies that are sold, the book becoming a bestseller, and it's hard to make money with that book. I don't know what the percentages are overall. Less than 1% of people surveyed that have started books ever actually finished that book. Of the people who have an actual published book, the average is less than 250 copies in its lifetime ever sell, and most of those are sold to the author and the author's friends. That's not encouraging. And then if you actually looked at how many people are making money who have become the 1% that wrote the book, become the tinier percent that sold at more than 250 copies, and the even tinier percent that actually made money, when you look at all that, it can be very discouraging, right? Because there's a lot of pitfalls to having a successful book, to writing a book in the first place. So what I do with this model is I look at those pitfalls 
And in the very beginning, I looked at them and I tried to build something, a company that could help people to overcome those pitfalls. But first, we had to identify those things. So what are they? Well, in the writing and publishing area, right, in this first part, the pitfalls tend to be things like people thinking that they need to grind out a thousand words a day because many gurus that are great writers and do write a thousand words a day, John Maxwell comes to mind. He writes a, a thousand words a day, every single day, even Christmas and New Year's. And he talks about that regularly. Well, if you thought that that was the only model that you could follow to actually get your book done, that would be pretty discouraging because quite frankly, not many people can be successful with that kind of model. I don't follow that model myself. Or maybe you think you need to like go away to a cabin in the woods to actually get your book finished, completed, successful. This is part of the reason, and maybe it's the main reason, that less than 1% ever actually complete their book. Because this idea of grinding it out just doesn't work very well. It's not very successful for people. They can't make it happen. This is author, again, that's the 1.0 version, right? Whoops. That's the 1.0 version. The unsuccessful version. When it comes to promoting your book, well, what do traditional publishers tell you? Well, traditional publishers, most, will tell you that what you need is you need a big audience already in place. Forgive me for the way I'm writing this. It's because the angle that I'm on. You need a big audience. You need a big social media following. You need a big email list. You need a big past client database. In other words, if you don't have a big platform, then they're not interested in you and you're probably not going to ever sell very many books. This is 1.0. This is why most self-published books are very unsuccessful and sell less than 250 copies in its lifetime. Author 1.0. If you do things that way, you're probably not going to be successful. And then author 1.0, when it comes to profit, is thinking about profit from the standpoint only of royalties or using your book like a big business card, which I hear a lot from people, right? Giving it away uh, at networking events, which isn't a bad idea, but using it just as a big business card and using it thinking that it's the royalties where your profit's going to be, this is all 1.0 thinking. And that's what will lead to discouragement with your book. It'll lead to, in the case of the published part, it'll lead to the inability to complete your book. When it comes to the promotion part, it'll lead to less than 250 copies sold. When it comes to profit, you'll never be happy because there won't be much profit with your book. Okay, so what do we do? in that kind of situation. Well, we need something better than that, right? And so the idea is what I call 2.0, which when it comes to the writing of your book and the publishing of your book, we teach and do something called enhanced ghostwriting. For those of you that are in our ghostwriting program or even our book coaching program, this is the model that we're following. What does that model look like? Well, rather than grinding it out or going to a cabin in the woods or just sitting down to write, we develop a great foundation first, a foundation based on attracting the right audience, right, with a hook and a title that attracts the right audience. And then we use enhanced ghostwriting or a TEDx style writing process. Uh, I've shared this many times, but very, very briefly. That simply means that what you're going to do is you're going to speak your book, but you're going to speak your book not in a random haphazard way with long run-on sentences that lead nowhere, but you're going to speak your book in a TEDx style. You're going to start with a great story. You're going to have an open loop because there's like a, you know, a dramatic point at which you're not culminating the story. You have an open loop. You do not culminate the story. Then you teach. Here's what I learned. Here's what we did. Here's what we found. Then you come back in. You culminate the story. Here's what we did after we learned these things. And here's what it produced 
in my life, in my business, in my family, in my marriage, with my children, whatever it is. And oh, by the way, if you would like uh, to learn a little bit more and see my video series on A, B, and C, then go to bestsellerpublishing.com forward slash hybrid ghostwriting or EGW or whatever, right? In other words, you're going to take them to next steps. All right. Now, if you're in the if you're in the enhanced ghostwriting program, uh, if if you're we're doing this with you, if you've already written your book, fantastic. Why am I going through this with you again? Well, for two reasons. One, I'll leave to the end. But one is this is a way that you can be creating content on a regular basis right now. You can create social media posts using this this model. You can create blog posts using this model. You can write emails using this model. And guess what? You can continue writing your next book using this exact same model. All you have to do is line these steps out first. Build your foundation. Make sure you know who the audience is. Make sure you have a great hook. You have a great title. Make sure that title leads to a great subtitle and then a great table of contents. And then every single chapter of that table of contents is nothing more than a story or two, a couple of open loops, the points that you're going to teach. And you can do that in 15 minutes in a recording with a writer or on your own into your phone using rev.com or some transcription software. You can do that with every single thing that you write. You can become a content machine. You can become an ongoing creator. So I say all this to say not that, hey, you need to join our enhanced ghostwriting program. Most of you already did. You're already my client. You've already paid me that money. I'm not looking to do it again. I'm saying that if you're stuck, if for some reason your book isn't written, then you're stuck right here, probably thinking that you need to grind it out and you need to get back on track using this process. And there's plenty of training and there's plenty of teaching and there's plenty of, of our BSP staff that will help you. But let's say your book's already done. Well, you should be creating content on an ongoing basis for your audience, right? Part of the idea of the book is building an audience and a platform, right? That goes to the second step, which is the promote phase. We heard from traditional publishing, hey, we're not interested in working with you because you don't really have an audience. You don't really have a following. You don't have a big social media presence. And so we say, well, instead of needing a big presence to promote my book successfully, what if the book itself could be a tool to build my huge audience? So we kind of flipped the whole idea on its head. I never had an audience before I started writing books. And what have I done? Well, I've used social media and my books and growing my email list to build an audience of hundreds of thousands of people on social media that have opted into my email list that pay attention to the things that I say. So what should I be doing? Going back here for a moment to the first part, the published part, I should be on a regular basis giving them something, right? Once they've maybe opted into my book, purchased my book, joined my email list, joined my Facebook group. I should be giving them something on a regular basis. Well, you can use enhanced ghostwriting to give people, to give your audience that you're going to build in the promotion phase to give them more content so they fall in love with you. I was on the uh, Zoom call with uh, uh, someone who was referred to us today that is getting started with our enhanced ghostwriting program and they're in the financial services field and uh, they said that they've done things very very differently they go direct to consumer rather than in financial services building a really big financial services business by the way um, using uh, financial service advisors that bring them clients and then take a big piece of the action what they decided to do a few years ago was start a podcast and now they're writing a book on the back end of it so they can use their podcast, their Facebook group, their email list, et cetera, to bring clients in going directly to the consumer rather than having that middleman, that financial advisor in, in its place. And they've built uh, a very, very large business, very successful business. So I said, well, this is a no brainer for you then when it comes to your book, because your book is just going to be a supercharger for everything that you're already doing. You're already creating content for people on a regular basis with your podcast and then with your blog posts, et cetera. So the book is just going to bring you more people. It's going to help you build your audience more, right? So what is the promotion part? That is the 2.0 version. Well, the 2.0 version of promotion is let's use our book 
to build our audience instead of the other way around. Let's use our book to attract the right people. How do we do that? Well, if you're writing a book on fill in the blank, uh, I just said financial services, so I'll use that example again. If you're writing a book on financial services, well, guess what? There are a hundred podcasts. There are 10,000 websites that have large audiences that you could either pay to put your book in front of that audience, or you could write blog post content, or you could be a guest on a podcast, right? In other words, you can already get in front of their audience that they've already collected with your book. All you have to do is either write a small check, and oftentimes it doesn't cost more than $10, $20, $30 to do something like that. Or if they have a really huge audience, it might cost a few hundred, but it'll be worth it. Or you use PR and media uh, to get in front of them by writing great content or by speaking great content, meaning being on a podcast, et cetera. And now your book can be promoted in front of those audiences, right? With just a little bit of money, right? And a little bit of focus and attention. This is exactly how we do it at Bestseller Publishing. When you come to me and say, hey, Rob, I want you to make my book a bestseller, and I'm doing a big book launch workshop tomorrow uh, where I'll be sharing our whole process of how we do book launches, and then I'll be making an offer. I'll, I'll be selling what we do. Um, when those people come to me, they're going to know exactly what we do, just like you should know exactly what we do. What do we do? Well, when it comes book launch time, we pay for advertising. So we're going to advertise on 50 to 60 different websites. We write the ads, we place the ads, we pay for the ads, right? We don't have an audience like built in for your book. I don't have an email list of 10 million people in every genre. So what do I do? I go to the people that have those audiences already in place. So I, I buy the ads. Uh, I do the social media posting. Uh, we write the press releases to get it in front of the right audiences to the right newspapers, et cetera. And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to send an email to your list. You don't have to make a blog post. You don't have to make a, a Facebook post. You don't have to do anything because we have flipped the script. Uh, whereas author 1.0 is, hey, if you don't have a big audience, you're out of luck. We say, who cares if you have a big audience? We're going to go to the people that already have a big audience for your topic. And we're going to pay them some money. And we're going to do that 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 times and make your book a bestseller that way. You can continue to do that. Uh, how often do I launch my books? Well, in one sense, I never stop launching my book because I use a book funnel every single day. I am paying for advertising for Publish, Promote, Profit. Many of you came to me because you saw my book. You saw my book funnel. You became a client. So I never stop promoting my book via Amazon ads, uh, via sending copies to my, my current clients, asking for referrals, via my book funnel, via pay ad, paid advertising, et cetera. I never stop promoting my book because it's about my book promoting me and my business. So this is, this is part of an ongoing process. It's not something you do one time and then forget it. Okay, last but not least, and perhaps most important because this is the ongoing process for profit and for impact, income and impact. And that is using your book, Author 2.0, is using your book for, and you guys should know this because I talk about it a lot, lead generation, speaking engagements, and PR and media. That's the big trifecta, right? The 2.0 version is using your book on an ongoing basis to generate leads for your business. I just shared a couple of ways that I do it. I do it in my book funnel, right? I do it with uh, sending copies of my book to potential clients, to current clients. I do it with speaking engagements. I do it with PR and media. So you need a process, an ongoing process to be doing this regularly with your book. If your book is going to be something that you've invested a considerable about uh, of time, energy, and money into, and I know that you have if you're my clients, and it's good, and I know that it is if you're my clients because we've helped you make it good, and it's to your right audience that you're going to continue serving for 
a year, two years, five years, 10 years, however long you're going to continue serving them. As long as you're serving them, you need to be using that book to generate more leads, if you want speaking engagements to generate speaking engagements, some people say, well, I don't want to speak. I'm not interested. No problem. Then, then cross that off. There's 10,000 ways to, to use your book to generate leads. It doesn't have to be speaking. But if you want speaking, nothing better than using your book to get speaking engagements. And then, as I said, PR and media. Uh, what you'll see, and, and here's what you need to be careful of. This is the author 1.0 mentality. What you will see from traditional publishers when it comes to things like speaking engagements and PR and media is they will send their authors, remember, they're already famous, they're already well-known, they will send their authors on PR and media tours. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love those. And we do those for our clients. They'll send their authors on speaking engagements because they want as much of a splash around the initial launch of that book as possible. Well, my point is this, if you're going to use that book to attract clients on an ongoing basis and to build your email list, to build your audience, to build your platform, then why would you ever stop doing that? Why would you ever stop appearing on podcasts? You know, I, I appear on a podcast at least two to four times every single month. Uh, my PR team helps to book me. I help to book me. I reach out. I know buddies. I have friends. If I have a guest on my podcast, then I ask them if I can appear on their podcast. I don't do a lot of radio. I do a lot of speaking engagements. You know that, but all the speaking engagements are basically right here in my, in my home office, right? Right in front of my computer, because that's what I prefer. Uh, I am doing more speaking this year on the road than I've done in a long time. I'm speaking in Mexico next week. Uh, I'm speaking in, I spoke in Orlando earlier this year. I'm speaking in Orlando again, uh, a little bit different for me, but I decided what the heck I'm going to do that. So I, I did, uh, you can choose to, to do that or not. The point is do something, do something. This is an ongoing process. This never ends. And it's using your book to get the speaking engagements, to do the lead generation, maybe with a book funnel, et cetera. And there's training. And I've talked about all these things. You actually get to see me doing it on a regular basis. I'm, I'm, we're, we're not like a traditional publishing company, right? That tells you to go do it and you got to figure it out on your own. We're actually doing it for ourselves. And we show you everything that you need to do this for yourself also. The point is, if you're stuck in any of these areas, then you're probably stuck in that 1.0 mentality. Or you've, you've done these things and you've done them successfully, but then you've just stopped doing them. You can't. You should never stop the promotion of your book. You should never stop using your book for lead generation, PR, speaking, et cetera. Okay? So those are some thoughts on where you may be stuck or what challenges you may be facing and how to think of them in a kind of broad strokes way. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, narrow uh, and, and minutiae involved in any of this, like lead generation, for example, because there's a thousand different ways to do it. But we talk about those things on a regular basis. Now, let me take a, let me take a step back and let me um, share kind of a meta view of all of this. Okay. So you've probably, if you've been to, you know, any of my workshops or, or heard to me speak or watch videos of mine uh, or read my book, certainly this model is, is not new to you. you you've seen it before. Um, it's something that I've been using for years, six, seven, eight years, at least. I don't even remember how long I've been using it, but a long time. Why do I use it? And could it be beneficial for you to use? So first thing I did is teach you the model and show you where you may be challenged right now or stuck. Great. Now I'm, I'm taking a step deeper and I'm saying that you might want to have a model like this for your business because here's what the model does. A model like this shows people where the pitfalls are where the obstacles are, where their objections are, 
And then it shows in a very non-confrontational way how you have solved those things and maybe even flip them completely on their head with your own creativity and with your own process. So when I share something like this and I talk about author 1.0 versus author 2.0, or I talk about our million dollar author model, and then I begin sharing about the real statistics, like, you know, 1% of the people that actually start writing their book ever actually finish their book. And then of that 1%, on average, they're only going to sell about 250 copies in their lifetime. And then I start breaking down why that is. Then they can immediately, most people, and I, I, I say almost all people, can immediately resonate because they've tried to grind out writing a thousand words a day. I hear that a lot. Like these are the things that we hear from people. You know, I was told I just need to write. Or I've had people come to me with hundreds of pages of writing, and it's just, there's no direction, there's no focus, there's no audience, it's their story, it, it, it's not to help anybody. Um, I'm sending out emails for my workshop, right, the launch workshop, and somebody emailed me back, and I try to read almost every email coming to me, but I often get hundreds in a day, but I, I read this one. And I, I saw an application that he put in to work with our team. And so I just emailed him back because he's obviously a smart and successful person, but he was writing a book. And the title of the book was something like why I became a real estate coach. And I, I'm like, you know, look, I, I, I understand you want to use your book to help people, you know, in real estate, realtors to sell more homes and to grow your coaching business. Those people that are interested in selling more homes don't care about you becoming a real estate coach. And I said it a lot nicer than that. It was via email. I hope I conveyed it a lot nicer. But you understand the point. The point is that somebody, if, if, he, fin if he does finish that book, it's not going to do what he wants it to do because he's making a cardinal error. And the cardinal error is he's writing his story instead of writing for the audience. So the point being, I know the pitfalls, just like you know the pitfalls that your ideal client has. You know what they are. You know what challenges they face. You know what objections they have. You know what issues they have. You know all of that. What you should do is you should come up with a model that conveys the flow of your business and then show them within that model, just like I have with publish, promote profit, show them where people typically fail within that flow and then show them here's how we help people to be successful in that part of the process. If you can do that for somebody just within a model, then you can immediately begin communicating your value to somebody in a really powerful way without trying to convince them of anything. Because what you've done is you've shared the very things that they're probably stuck on right now. And then you've said, here's how we fix that. We understand, we face this ourselves. Here, here's how we fix that. And oh, by the way, once you fix that, then you go to the next stage. And here's what the next stage looks like. Here's the pitfalls in the next stage, and here's the pitfalls in the next stage. Does that make sense to everybody? See, this is the, the, the first part of this was talking to you about the specifics of the million-dollar author model and where you may be stuck in the writing, in the promotion, in the profit phase. But the real deeper and maybe bigger lesson here is – how to think about having a model for your own business, right? Um, the model could be something as simple as, you know, talking more has attract, convert, deliver, and then scale. This is his coaching model. This is what every coach needs to do. He coaches coaches. The first thing they have to do is attract a client. Once they attract a the client, they need to convert that person from a prospect to a client. Then they have to deliver great results. And one of the pitfalls to deliver great results with coaching is most coaches think they have to do that one-on-one. -on -one. We show you how to do that in a group. And oh, by the way, here's how you scale. 
That's just the first one that came to my mind. But you have, you do this in your business right now. Okay. You have a process of how you help people be successful right now. Think what's the first thing they need. And then what are the pitfalls to getting that thing? And then think, what's the second thing that they need after that? And then what are the pitfalls to that? Just take them mentally through your process. Think about those pitfalls. And then you could build out a tremendous model for your business that enables you to communicate like your value to people in a really, really powerful way. Okay, I've said enough. 30 minutes of talking. 